Dean Thiessen from New Energy Farms in Leamington, Ontario. Uh, we are a primary producer of uh, greenhouse vegetables and over the last number of years we of course having greenhouses in Canada we have we, we have to use enormous amounts of fuel to basically to heat our greenhouses. So over the last number of years in my father's generation, we went from using um, coal to bunker oil to natural gas. And now back when I came home, we started uh, using solid fuels, biomass, using wood chips. Over the last number of years, we've seen the price of biomass increase. And again, we didn't want to be subjected to any of the problems that we've had in the past of, of volatility in the energy market. So we started producing energy crops, Miscanthus. Miscanthus, so what is it? Miscanthus is a perennial grass. It's been in the country for a hundred years as an ornamental. There are many, many different varieties of Miscanthus. In this specific case, Miscanthus is a perennial grass that we have developed varieties in conjunction with others and ourselves that are sterile and non-invasive. Being it a perennial grass, you plant it once. We're planting it because they don't produce seeds. We plant it with a, a rhizome. We put a rhizome in the ground. We have planters um, that are displayed over here on the other side of our booth that will put these into the ground and it's planted once and it will grow biomass on an annual basis year and year out. We've seen plots in Germany that have been growing miscanthus at research stations as well as growers for over over 20 years where they're harvesting it every year with little to no input. Miscanthus being a perennial grass similar to switchgrass and similar to prairie grasses and all of those things are very efficient and sustainable crops to grow meaning that they Lead, need little to no inputs because re they recycle a lot of their nutrients and they have bio, high biomass yields. Why we chose Miscanthus was because it was the highest yielding of all of these crops. We looked at willow, we looked at poplar, we looked at switchgrass, we looked at prairie cordgrass. Miscanthus was seeing yields in many cases in upwards of two to three times over that of dry matter. Um, in our area, we have roughly currently right now, and most of it is propagation, we have about 500 acres that we're growing. Um, that represents about 20% of our needs at our farm. So next year we're going to be contracting growers, contracting with growers to grow the product for us. Um, so it is the beginning of our opportunity and primarily how we got started into this business at Pyramid Farms was our, is the greenhouses that we have. Why we started in this opportunity was, was to find a long-term, reliable energy source to support our, our operations. We haven't been able to find it with anything else, so the only thing we can do is rely on primary producers to give us that opportunity. So if we take a look at the life cycle of the crop, like I mentioned before, you're planting a rhizome or a vegetative cutting of miscanthus in the ground. It's going to take two years before it starts producing biomass. Once that happens, um, in year one you're going to have no harvestable yield. In year two you'll see maybe 30 to 50 percent of, of, uh, of the capacity of the crop's yield. And then moving into year three you're going to see yields of that will represent what you will see for the next few decades on an annual basis. So what happens is, is the shoots emerge out of the ground roughly depending on where you're at, but traditionally where, when in and around the time you're planting corn, the shoots are emerging out of the ground and then those shoots then will grow. By the middle of June, the canopy or, or the field will be enclosed, there'll be no light hitting the ground and from there it'll grow. Currently right now our crops in Leamington um, on mature stands are approaching 13 to 14 feet tall right now. So as you go through the summer months, what will happen is, is over time the plant will, will um, be creating energy for itself to grow but also creating energy which goes back to the bulb or rhizominous like, like product. As it goes through the process, as we move towards the end of the, of the growing season and we start getting some heavy frosts, the plant will start drying itself down. And once it's dried itself down, usually by the middle in, in Leamington, usually by the middle of December, we're seeing moisture contents below 20%. In some cases, this past year is around 
Moving into January and February, at the time when now we can harvest it and store it, we're seeing moisture contents below 15%. Middle of April, when we harvested some of our, our miscanthus, we saw moisture contents below 10%, with 9.6%. From there, we can either take it and chip it, with traditional equipment, with a, like a silage harvester with a Kemper head, go through and chip it, blow it, blow it into a forage wagon and bring it to our site and burn it. Or you can take it with a traditional mower conditioner, cut it, condition it, bale it, store it at the end of the field till its end use. So what really attracted to us was, was the yield, long-term sustainability with little to no inputs, also using traditional farm equipment outside of the time when the farm equipment is being used. With that all together, um, I think provides a significant opportunity. Well, biomass is biomass. If we take a look at hardwoods all the way through to, let's say, cereal residues like wheat and, and, uh, and rye, what we have is, is fairly close to the same BTU contents per pound. There is a slight difference, but it ranges no more than 15% from one end of the scale. Traditionally, where the loss is, is in the amount of ash or nutrient that's in the crop. So, as it relates to miscanthus or perennial grasses, where we see the opportunity also is, is that, and why I liked miscanthus was the standability. The longer you wait at, for your harvest, the better the biomass quality is. So if you're harvesting in December, you're harvesting a lot of leaves. We don't want those leaves. One reason is, is those leaves carry the nutrients for the next year. But we have to compromise. Harvesting it from December 1st to May 1st, we're gonna leave 45% of the biomass in the field. So 45% of the biomass in many cases is the tops of the canes as well as the leaves. But we want that for sustaining its growth so we don't have to add any nutrients. But with that said, we're still achieving in our area 8 to 10, even much as 11 tons of dry matter per acre. The main thing is, is that harvest timing is biomass quality because the leaves that hold all the nutrients will now basically be in the biomass that will be combusted, which will cause more issues. So the longer we wait, the higher the biomass quality it is. So we go from, from poor biomass qualities, but still acceptable, to biomass qualities that are almost second to none. What's happened at New Energy Farms, so Pyramid Farms started this opportunity for ourselves and others to, to find our, our own, to create our own you know, we created our own demand and we needed the biomass. But what New Energy Farms is primarily doing is, is like myself, I've learned enormous amount from the mistakes that were made on the past. So New Energy Farms is taking those opportunities and mistakes that I've made, as well as colleagues of mine in Europe that have been doing this longer than myself, and brought all of that together to develop new cultivars, to develop new equipment, to develop new opportunity. So New Energy Farms is primarily, what we're doing is, is, is we are allowing the agriculture community to access the proper genetics, to access the proper technology and experience and, and equipment, to be able to establish this cost effectively and economically, but in conjunction with that and partnering up with ourselves. So New Energy Farms, what we're doing is creating networks. Creating networks of, of, of academic people, developing new intellectual property for the future with a company called Solmass, developing agricultural opportunities with primary producers with New Energy Farms and Pro Feedstocks, which is another company that we formed that's aggregating, working with offtake opportunities, developing new products. For instance, some of the new products that we're looking at are second generation products. Some of these second generation products are plastic amendments, produce trays, packaging material, animal bedding, all of which in many cases have already been done in Europe and we can see examples, we can see products, we can duplicate them over here. And all that we're doing and what has gotten us to, to where we are today is providing a long-term sustainable feedstock that is unlike any feedstock, it's just like corn. It's not necessarily corn is just used for food and feed. It's producing literally thousands of other compounds. And miscanthus, being a high yielding potential 
feedstock is similar. We can create many, many more things. But thank you very much. Great.